Good day everyone, this is IVM Asubi and I am the reporter of Metabolism and Cell Structure. So, I am creating this video because the first video that I prepared was blurred. So, I hope this video is clear enough for us to understand Metabolism and Cell Structure. So, let us begin. So, these are the topics that will be discussed for this video we have what is metabolism and its two types the stages of metabolism the cell structures where metabolism reaction occurs the ATP and energy the hydrolysis of ATP and ATP and muscle contraction so now what is metabolism so metabolism is the process by which our body converts what we eat and drink into energy. So it is the all chemical reaction that occur in living organisms. So from digestion to the transport of substances from cell to cell. So there are two types of metabolism. So first we have the catabolism which is the destructive metabolism. And second, the anabolism, which is the constructive metabolism. So, in catabolic reactions, it involves the breaking down of large complex molecules to provide energy and smaller molecules. So, while anabolic reactions is involves the use of ATP energy to build larger molecules. So, as we can see in this diagram, Catabolic reactions, which is the oxidation of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, produces ATP, which will be used for the anabolic reactions for muscle contraction, transport, and synthesis of cellular compounds. Now we have the stages of metabolism. So there are three stages of catabolic reactions. First, we have the digestion and hydrolysis, which is the breaking down of large molecules to smaller ones that enter the bloodstream. And stage two is the degradation, which is the further breaking and some oxidation of molecules to two and three carbon compounds. And then the stage three is the oxidation of small molecules to carbon dioxide and water in the citric acid cycle and electron transport which provides energy for ATP synthesis. Now this is the diagram of the stages of metabolism. So, so beginning with the digestion and communicating with the production of ATP within mitochondria. So, in stage 1, this involves the digestion of macronutrients, namely proteins, polysaccharides, and lipids. So, so, so. This happens within the gastrointestinal tract to give the constituents building blocks which includes the amino acid, the monosaccharides or the glucose, fatty acids, and glycerol. So, these end products of digestion are then transported across the epithelial lining of the small intestine and eventually end up within the bloodstream and fr from the bloodstream they are transported into cells where stage 2 begins so the end products of digestions are digestion are then further broken down eventuating in the production of common intermediate of the metabolism known as the acetyl CoA and this occurs within the mitochondria of our cells. So now during this stage 3, this acetyl CoA fuels the citric acid cycle. This to produce high energy electron 
carrier, the NADH and the FADH2. And this occurs within the matrix of the mitochondria. So finally, these high energy electrons produced during the stage 3 fuel proton pumps located in the electron transport chain within the inner, inner mitochondrial membrane. This leads to the movement accumulation of protons within the intermembrane space, establishing electrochemical gradient which is subsequently used to generate ATP in this part ATP in the process termed oxidative phosphorylation. So this was just the brief overview of the stages of metabolism when it comes to the breakdown of consumed food and the production of ATP within our cells. So in further the further reporters discussed how the each of these macronutrients follows a specific metabolic pathways in the generation of ATP. So now now let us move on to the cell structures where metabolism reaction occurs. So we have here the metabolic reaction occurs in specific sites within the cells. So first we have this plasma membrane which separates the contents of cell of a cell from the external environment and contains it contains structures that communicate with other cells. Next we have the cytoplasm which consists all of the cellular contents between the plasma membrane and nucleus. And then in cytoplasm we have the cytosol, the fluid part of the cytoplasm that contain enzymes for many of the cell's chemical reactions including glycolysis and fatty acid synthesis. So we also have the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough and smooth. So rough type processes proteins for secre secretion and synthesizes phospholipids, while the smooth type synthesizes fats and steroids. And we also have the Golgi complex, which modifies and secretes proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum and synthesizes glycoproteins and cell membranes. And then we also have these lysosomes, which contains hydrolytic enzymes that digest and recycle old cell structures. And we also have, of course, we have the mitochondria, which contains the structures for the synthesis of ATP from energy producing reactions. And then we have the nucleus, which contains genetic information for the replication of DNA and the synthesis of protein. And then we also have the ribosome, which are the sites of protein synthesis using messenger RNA templates. So that was the cell structures which are involved in the metabolic processes. So next we have the ATP and the energy. So ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. It is the energy form stored in cells. So it is obtained from the oxidation of food. It consists of adenosine, the nitrogen-based, a sugar, and the three phosphate groups. So it requires 7.3 per mole to convert ADP plus the inorganic phosphate to ATP. So when energy is needed by the cell, it is converted from storage molecules into ATP. And then ATP then serves as a shuttle delivering energy to places within the cell where energy consuming activities are taking place. So, so we have here the structure of this ATP or the adenosine triphosphate. So we have consist the nitrogenous bases, the adenine group, 
the rib sugar and then the three phosphate group so this is the structure of the adenosine triphosphate so now let us proceed to the hydrolysis of atp so the hydrolysis of atp to adp release releases 7.3 kcal per mole so as you can see in this formula to hydrolyze this ATP to ADP, we need to release 7.3 kcal per mole to produce ADP. So, in hydrolyzing ADP to AMP, we should also release uh, 7.3 kcal per mole. So, we have here the diagram showing this hydrolysis of ATP to ADP and ADP to AMP. So, from so from adenosine triphosphate in hydrolysis of ATP there will be an addition of water so this released one or two one phosphate groups in an exergonic process so it produces adenosine diphosphate this one and then further hydrolysis takes place place which is the addition addition of water which will result to adenosine monophosphate so this is how the hydrolysis of ADP to ADP and ADP to A AMP happens so ATP hydrolysis this is a catabolic reaction process by which chemical energy that has been stored in this high energy phos one hydride bonds in adenosine triphosphate is released by splitting these bonds for example in muscles by producing work in the form of mechanical energy so now let us proceed to the adp and muscle contraction so in here and here the muscle fibers which contain the protein fibers actin and myosin so it contracts when a nerve impulse increases calcium ion so the muscle fibers obtain the energy for contraction from the hydrolysis of atp and then it returns to the relaxed position as the calcium ion and atp decrease so we have here the steps of how this ATP and muscle contraction happens so first we have the here the active site on uh, actin is exposed as calcium ion bind to troponin so this is this side is the actin and then a tropon the calcium ion binds the red one the calcium ion binds to the troponin the green one so in second stage the myosin head this is the myosin head in second stage the myosin head forms a cross bridge so it forms cross bridge with the actin so it forms a cross bridge and then And then during the power stroke, the myosin head, this, the myosin head, bends and ADP and phosphate are released. So you can see in the diagram. Then a new molecule of ADP attaches to the myosin head, causing the cruise bridge to detach. There is the detachment of the myosin head to the actin and then this atp hydrolyzes to adp and phosphate which returns the myosin to the cocked position so that's how atp and muscle contraction happens so so we have here the rule of ATP in muscle contractions. So first, ATP binds to myosin head and upon hydrolysis into ADP and the inorganic phosphate, it transfers its 
its energy to the cruise bridge, energizing it. And then ATP is responsible for the disconnecting of the myosin cross bridge at the conclusion of a power stroke. And then ATP also provides the energy for the calcium ion pump which actively transports calcium ions back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So now we know that ATP is critical for muscle contractions because it breaks the myosin to actin to actin cross bridge freeing the myosin for the next contraction so this ends my report for this video so i hope you have clearly understand the metabolism and the soul structure